traders from around the world. What's going on? It's Ricky Cadden here at Real Life Trading Australia. I hope you guys are doing exquisitely epic today. Let's take a look at what happened in the markets right now. So the SPY, uh, yesterday we actually gapped down, beautiful gap and go, but we did gap down like 2%. Um, usually that is a fadable gap and we actually faded that gap today, one day later. Um, in my previous review, I did mention that most likely we will chop around. We're probably going to chop around, go sideways a bit, maybe create some lower lows. Uh, where right now we did gap up. It was a nice gap and go today to take bullish. Um, if we take a look at the five minute, how you would have played this in day trading room, if you were here at Real Life Trading, you had the five minute high wave candle right here. Your entry would have been, you would have came back, bought on the retest, and then had a stop below below the lows of these candles, and then slowly grinded that higher. Um, if we just take a look back at the hourly chart, this was a retest gap, right? And we have, the last time we had that was last week. We had a retest gap, retraced about 50%, came down, got some lower lows, and then came back up, and then obviously came back down. Right now, we've got a retest gap, uh, traded higher, um, most likely I think we fill this gap a little bit more if, I mean, if we open quite flat tomorrow, I will look for a little bit of a spike higher and then a trade lower. I do think that this is not going to be the bottom on the spy. I don't think this is just going to launch out of here and go to the moon. Um, we most likely will be a little bit choppy here. Um, so just, just keep your eyes trade what you see not what you feel okay that's that's pretty much the best advice that i could probably give um the, the dow jones today man i've got to give a shout out to brad and donna you guys traded this like absolute legends i actually bring up their tr their trade right here so brad had this beautiful beautiful bought some calls on the retest on the DIA and look at this Elliott wave, five, five, five wave Elliott, Elliott wave pattern. I mean, traded like an absolute champion. Couldn't have done it any better. Brad, it's also his birthday today. So happy birthday, man. And well done, Donna, for catching that along with Brad. Um, here's Apple on the daily um, this is a this is a point where i think that most likely you know we did have a retest gap we did have a retest gap uh, a couple of days ago so i do think that most likely we will come up into the into the moving averages and then maybe roll back down um, if you are looking at accumulating shares long term on apple now is the time to probably start getting some more or at least increasing your position um, Beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful retest that we had today. It could continue tomorrow. Um, however, most likely if we get a gap down, it's probably going to go a little bit lower and then we'll trade down to these lows again. Uh, also want to give a shout out to David Potvin, aka Roboman. He faded Billy Billy over earnings like a boss this morning. Well, not over earnings, but after their gap, up they faded it and i'll just he actually faded on the one minute so here was his setup right here we you could not catch this out the gate if you did well hats off to you he he shorted the retest he came down come back up so here's the retest he got in short here with a stop above here and then took out two r here so well done david for your beautiful trade on billy billy Here's Square. Here's Square. So the other day I did the stock review. I did say that this is not going to be a V bottom here on Square. Most likely you will get a chance to start accumulating some shares. We did gap down like pretty much the rest of the market yesterday and we are trading higher. Most likely we're going to chop around a bit. Um, and I do think that we do go lower. So if we just go into the 15 minute here, okay, so we did fill this gap. So this was a gap and go on the 
on the 15 minute chart uh, from yesterday, from two days ago. And then we did come up and fill this gap almost completely. So if we do come up and trade a little bit higher tomorrow, I think it's going to be short term, pretty much like the rest of the markets. Most likely we're going to, most likely on the daily, we're probably going to come up and then come back down, create some lower lows. And this is where we'll probably start to, you know, really build some pressure and then look to go higher and buy the dip on that one. Here's Roku just doing what Roku does as always. Um, I'm not going to be buying up here. This, this, this big bullish candle here was, well, that move that we we're going to create all time highs again, that was, Jeremy's wizardry, he picked that a mile away before it even happened. So most likely from here, where I think we go, this is not the most, this is obviously a lot of people selling on that candle there. So from right here, I mean, oh, on the weekly, I'll bring up the uh, long-term moving averages and we haven't even got any. I'll bring the short terms up. Okay. So, I mean, we're getting pretty far away um, on the daily. Yeah, on the daily. Okay, so right now I'm not going to be one to buy here. Generally, I wouldn't look to buy. Um, if we get too far away from these long-term moving averages, I'm very skeptical and very cautious about getting into a long-term position. I normally buy on a dip like this. Um, so right now, I'd be staying away. If anything, I'd be looking to, if we start to close below these lows, I'll be looking to buy something that runs with put options. Um, but other than that, just buy the dip on Roku um, if you are looking to go long, but I personally wouldn't be buying up here. I mean, this is, this is, this is getting quite ridiculous. Um, I know it's a, I know it's a big winning stock at the moment, but it's definitely, I think their valuation's way, way, way up there. Um, let's take a look at the ASX 200, XJO. So the other day when I did the stock review, we did say that most likely we are going to chop around a bit and trade a little bit lower, wait for these moving averages to come in. Um, this particular move, like we are getting quite, quite a well away. Um, we are getting quite a well away from this massive, this massive move that we had here, right? And we haven't had that decent of a pullback. So the last, one of the other reviews I did, I said that most likely we'll have about a 4% pullback. So I'm still expecting this to come back down, you know, maybe down to the 100. Um, so at, at, at this point in time, short term, I'm not overly bullish. I'm just neutral and I'm just trading what I see. Um, but pretty much... Just keep buying the dips. Keep buying the dips. This is not a dip to be buying. This is just a lot of people probably closing out their profits. Um, but yeah, so let's have a look at FMG. Now, FMG, another one. If you're not in this already, you've missed the boat. Okay. Um, here is, I'll just do a quick wave count. You've got a one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and most likely we're going to get a bit of a choppiness. So probably like a A, B, C here most likely i mean if we take a look at the weekly chart we are coming up very very high i know this was a resistance level yes we could just bounce out of here and keep going higher personally i feel like the the way the five count wave has already happened on fmg looking at the daily so the the time to buy was definitely around november and december um if you're, if you're in right now, as you can see today, where actually there's a lot of people taking profits, especially after this big bullish candle we had yesterday on the markets on FMG. So right here, most likely I'll be looking at selling or at least taking profits on FMG. So if you're in long term, maybe lock in some gains on that one. Uh, here's Woolies, ticker symbol, wow. Alrighty. Now everyone uses Woolies. We all buy, we all buy from their groceries, unless you're a Coles fan. Um, so I want to bring this up on the monthly chart. Now we are coming back into these highs that we were just before the GFC. So 
I'm not saying that we're going to come up here and then crash lower like we did. But what I am saying is most likely look to either take profits, but if you're a long-term holder, I would be looking at getting into a collar trade on this one. Maybe sell some covered calls, you know, around, around 30, you know, 35 and then get, get into a, some puts down here. Um, Woolies, we are getting, we generally, we don't, we don't get more than 10% away without having some sort of pullback. Um, and I can show you that on this chart here. So away from the moving averages here, we get 10%, we pull back, um, you know, over here, we come up. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. We come up here, we go eight, 9%, you know, and then we come back down. So generally, at this point, if you're in bullish, then that's good. But long term, I'd just be looking to protect your capital and or protect your profits as well. So just get into some covered calls, maybe even a collar. And uh, yeah, that's Woolies, good old Woolworths. Here's Rio Tinto and beautiful, beautiful bullish trend. Uh, I'll take a quick look on the weekly. We've, we're on wave five. We're on a wave five count right now. So if you just take a look at this, we've got the wave one, two, three, four, five. Um, so at this point, once again, I'd be looking to take profits off the table. I know there is a lot of volatility in the markets with regarding China and, and the US. And obviously that is going to affect the Australian market as well because we are big importers and, and exporters for Chinese goods. So. Um, with Rio, if you're in long, just look to take profits up here. I'll just take a quick look at the monthly chart. Yeah, the monthly chart, we are getting quite quite up there, quite extended. So if you just take a look here, what's interesting about these last two candles on the monthly. So we've actually had a bearish high wave candle right here, followed by a bullish, you know, high wave candle here with a long lower wick. We also had this pretty much a similar candle, but it's different, obviously different colors. So we've got the big bullish high wave candle here and then another following it the next day. Um, right now, if I just draw a line right here from this support, this is where we tested the support, created the nice little lower highs. Um, and then we did start to trade lower. I'm not saying that Rio is going to fall off a cliff and then come crumbling down, but all I'm saying is I'm not bullish on Rio right now. Um, if we do start to close below this candle on the monthly, I do I do expect us to pull back to at least you know 80, 84, 85, 50, 85 or 84.50, um, and from there we'll just see what happens in the markets and we'll analyze what we see then. Uh, here is EXL. Now, the, okay, so EXL, Lixanol, there's a lot of talk about um, with, you know, all the cannabis companies making making lots of money on, the, on, on all these weed stocks and EXL was definitely one of them and everyone has bought into the hype. Now, guys, this... There's, there's still a lot of news. You'll see a lot of ads on, yeah, you should buy EXL. Um, we are in a one, two, three, four, five wave now, and this looks like to be an ABC pattern. So most likely, if you're not in now, I wouldn't be looking to get in just yet. Um, obviously, you want to look to buy the dip, uh, but we are getting quite extended here from these moving averages. Um, if you are going to look to buy you know, maybe dip your toes in around, you know, $4. And then if it comes back down to the 50, then maybe look at buying. But at this point in time, I'm not overly bullish on, on EXL. I, once again, I don't buy these, these massive highs. I do like to. Sorry, I lost you there. Um, I do like to get get in on the longer term moving averages. So if I can buy that, that would bring us down to the 100 moving average right here. But if we can get down a little bit lower, then that would be perfect. 
Uh, DMP. So I spoke about this being on my radar after these candles right here, saying that this is coming into a buying zone. Uh, we are in this buying zone right now. Um, so I have got my, uh, I was alerted on this and I am looking at going long. However, I, I want, I, I'm not going to try and pick the bottom, especially with what's going on at the moment. Um, I will obviously look to buy the dip if we start to come higher here. And then I'll look to take this thing higher and look for some, some sort of pattern like this. Um, but I'm not going to basically just buy, buy now and then buy hope and pray. Um, but definitely DMP, keep it on your radar, looking really, really juicy for a long down here. We did have a nice little gap down and uh, a retest of that gap. So we have filled that gap from yesterday. Um, but if we get a nice gap up tomorrow above this candle, we most likely, we most likely will be bullish. So just keep your eyes on um, DMP for a long. All right, so cryptocurrency craze again. Um, I'll, I'll start with Bitcoin. Bitcoin has just been rocketing higher. Real life traders have been talking about buying off this 200. I know Jeremy has been talking about accumulating down here. Um, if you were not in, just be bullish to be bullish at the moment. You do want to be buying on a dip. You don't want to be buying on these breakouts. Um, this is an absolute monster of a thing. Uh, we ha and we are coming into some resistance back here at eight four two nine. So most likely from here, just keep buying the dips. Get wait for wait for a little bit of a consolidation pattern to happen on Bitcoin, and um, yeah, just. Stay stay long on Bitcoin at the moment, especially. Um, I mean, everything that's going on with the markets right now, markets are going down. Bitcoin seems to be going up, so a lot of people are putting their faith in Bitcoin and seeing it as a great commodity to buy. Um, Ripple now, Ripple. Okay, so we've had a bit of news come out on Ripple on this day. This was when Fidelity came out and said that they're actually going to be heavily invested in crypto or sorry, in the Bitcoin and ripple. Uh, that was obviously going to form some sort of bullishness in this coin. Um, we did form a beautiful little double bottom here and we did retest the neckline. Uh, so I'll draw that better. We did retest the neckline and start to go higher. Um, and then it was the 15th that we had, sorry, the, was the 15th. So yeah, we got the, the news saying that we're going to be able to buy XRP with credit cards and also Coinbase releasing that you'll be able to buy XRP on their platform. So there's going to be, there's going to be a little bit of craze at the moment. Um, right now we have, we are running into some resistances. We do have resistance here up at 45 and then again at 55. So I do think that we will find some weakness as we come into these levels. And at that, at that point, if you are in long, you can either look to take profits and then get in on a dip again. Um, but basically just keep your eyes on, on ripple to slowly grind higher. Uh, but that's all, folks. That's all i got for you today. Um, I hope you like this video. And I will be trading with the Real Life Traders tonight for your Wednesday, Wednesday madness that we like to call it. Um, but yeah, so if you have any reviews that you, or any stocks that you want me to review in the Aussie market, I'll definitely take a look at them for you. Just leave a comment in this video. Um, but until then, Love life, live life and trade it.